welcome to Construction Math. Today we're going to be talking about level of accuracy. All right. So on your note taker for bell work, think about a time when you needed to buy something. Did you need an exact amount or an estimate? Write down an example on your note taker and share with your partner. And I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Math check for today. One, we need to know how to do long division. Number two, we need to know what that symbol is and what it means and what answer we would come up with. So teacher, pause the video, have the students work it out, and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's go to our slate and let's go ahead and see. Remember long division. You probably haven't done it without a calculator for a while, and that's a terrible sign, but that's okay. This was 36,043. Remember, three goes into third doesn't go into three, but it goes into thirty-six six times. Six times six is thirty-six. Subtract and bring down the next number. Six goes into zero zero times. Well, yeah, let's just bring down the next number. Six goes into four zero times. So bring down the next number. Six goes into forty-three seven times. Seven times six is forty-two. We have a remainder left of 1, so I put the remainder on the top and what we divided by on the bottom. If you used a calculator, it'll come out to look something like this, 0.1666 repeating. All right. Or if you go way right back to grammar school, grade school, you probably remember to put remainder 1. I prefer either this answer or this answer. The remainder 1 doesn't really tell us whether it's closer to 6007 or 6008. Problem 2 says to take 7. This symbol is read as plus or minus 9. So what it means is you break this down into two problems. You break it down into 7 plus 9 and give the answer, which is 26. You take 7 minus 9 and the answer is 8. These are the two answers. This symbol requires two answers. All right, pause the video, teachers, if the student needs more time. Welcome back. Let's clear it off and go back to our PowerPoint. All right, so we're going to go on to the next one. Now, we need to talk about what kind of answer is going to be expected for a problem. And what you want to do is you want to think about the units, think about context clues, your own personal experience in the real life, and know that it's not every problem is the same and it's a mistake to treat them the same. So go ahead and look through those, fill in any missing words on your note taker, and then we'll be ready to start. Welcome back. Now, I want you to decide with these three problems, do you need just an estimate of the number of things you need to buy, or should you use an exact value? So pause the video, number one, two, three in your note taker, and at either answer estimate or exact. Teacher, pause the video and I'll meet you back here in a couple minutes. Welcome back. Number one says you need to buy three new shop compressors. I can guarantee you shop compressors cost quite a bit of money. So what I'm going to say is I need an exact amount there. I want three. I'm not just going to leave it three to five. Now, when you need to buy nuts and bolts, Usually you buy them and you just ask for maybe a pound or two. So that's just an estimate. You might know that you need 10 or 15 or 30 and you kind of estimate that. Now, when you need to buy 12 volt car batteries for the shop trucks, again, you would probably want an exact amount. All right, let's go on to the next. Now, in measuring, there are certain limitations. Depending on which kind of tool you have, it depends on the level of accuracy. If you have a, a meter stick or a regular ruler, it's not as quite as accurate as some of the other kinds of tools, like a micrometer. The, t the tool you're going to need to pick is dependent about how accurate you need to be. And please remember that all measurements are approximate. The last digit of that number indicates the level of accuracy. So if you measure something that's seven inches, you're really only guaranteed that that measurement is going to be between six inches and eight inches. And we're going to practice on that in just a minute. 
All right, here's an exact, here's an example. You measure with a uh, ruler, a metric ruler, that a pencil is 6.8 centimeters long. Notice the place that I measured to was the nearest tenths place. It's 6.8 or 6 and 8 tenths. Since all measurements are approximate, the last digit indicates the accuracy. So it either can be a tenth smaller, which gives you 6 and 7 tenths, or it can be a tenth bigger. That's the level of confidence. You can think it's really close to 6.8, but you can only be confident it is between 6 and 7 tenths and 6 and 9 tenths centimeters. So add the missing values and the missing words to your note taker. Let's go on. Now, here's one for you to try. A construction worker goes to Home Depot and buys 33 inches of flexible plastic pipe. The associate at Home Depot measures it with a tape measure. Figure out what the range of accuracy is for this measurement of the person at Home Depot. Teacher, pause the video, have the students come up with their answer, and then have them compare with a partner and call on non-volunteers. And I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Here's our answer. Since it's to the nearest one inch, we can be one inch smaller to one inch larger. So we know the range of confidence is going to be between 32 inches and 34 inches. Right. Calculating money when you go, and this is true everywhere. If you go in and it's saying three things for a dollar or five items for seven dollars, when we deal with money, dollars and cents, the merchant is always going to round up to the nearest cent. Now gas prices, when you buy it at the, at the pump, are to the nearest tenth of a cent. All right, so let's look at an example here. All right, let's go to our slate. And let's actually work through this. We had three items for $7.48 because I want to discuss this with you. Remember when you divide by a decimal, the decimal comes straight up. Three goes into six two times. Two times three is six. I subtract and bring down. Three goes into 12 four times. 12, bring down, goes in nine times, 27 bring down and goes in three. Now this is never going to come out so we can just go dot dot dot. But when the merchant prices this, if you were if you were rounding this off and it was just a rounding off problem in math, you'd round it off to 2.49. But it's dollars and cents. So the merchant always rounds up to the next cent. So he will charge you $2.50. All right. It's important to know that we always go up to the next penny. Okay, add that to your note taker. Pause if you need to. Welcome back. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. And here we worked it out. So the store would charge you $2.50. The store is in the business to make money, so they're never going to round to your advantage. So let's look at the next one. You try this problem. This part store sells batteries to, to repair shops in packages of six. The cost for six batteries is $295. How much would they charge for one? So teacher, pause the video, have the students work out the problem, have them compare with their partner, call them non-volunteers, and I'll meet you back here in a second. So let's go to our slate. We add six for $2.95. $295. So we go two doesn't go or six doesn't go into two, but it goes into 29 four times. Subtract and bring me down. Six goes into that nine times. Bring my decimal straight up. I get 54. Bring down, it goes in once. Six. It goes in six times. 36. It goes in six times again. So we're gonna round up. So they would charge you $49. And 17 cents. All right. It always rounds up when we're talking about money. All right. Pause the video if you need to discuss. Welcome back. Let's go back to our PowerPoint and let's try the last. That was my answer, so I know I did it correctly. And now here's a real life example.
It says a construction worker found out that he used an average, or what we call in math, the mean of 11.7 pieces of sheetrock a week. How many should he buy? And the, the truth is, when you go to Home Depot to buy sheetrock, you cannot buy parts of a piece, I wouldn't think. You need to buy full pieces, so he needed to get at least 12 sheets, right? Because it was just an average. If you said 12 sheets or more, you're also correct. So let's go on. Here's a you try. A handyman noted that he had done $2,044.28 in repairs during his five-day week. What's his average per day? Right. So teacher, pause the video, have the students work it out, and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's go to our slate. And we're going to take five and divide it into, and I need to find that number, so just give me a second, $2,044.28. So let's bring the decimal up. It goes in four. Bring down. Doesn't go in. It goes in eight. 40. Subtract and bring down. It goes in 8 times again. That's 40. 28. That goes in, um, let's see, 5 times. 25. Goes in 6 times. So his average would be $408.86. Here we're just rounding. We're not charging people. 6 is a raise it number, so it raises the number before it. So we got $408. $8.86. So check your answer. Pa teacher, pause if you need to. And I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's clear this out and go back to our PowerPoint. And let's see. Got the same answer. All right. Now tolerance is, and that plus minus got a little bit whacked out on my, on my um, PowerPoint, but it wants to know the voltage. A battery tests at 12.7 volts plus or minus Two tenths of a volt. What's the lowest and the highest? So here's my answer. So let's go to the slate and we'll work it out for you and explain it all. So it said 12.7 volts plus or minus two tenths of a volt. Again, this is just like in the Bellwork. Plus minus is going to give us two values. If I do 12.7 plus 0 0.2, then I do 12.7 minus 0 0.2 volts. So here I get 12.9 volts. And here I get 12.5 volts. So we're pretty sure that our answer will be someplace in that range from 12.5 volts to 12.9 volts. So plus minus, just remember, this has two math symbols in it, so you get two math answers. All right? Pause the video if you need to, and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's go back to our PowerPoint, and we're almost finished today. All right. So now, here's a U truck. A, coil, a rotor coil resistance is 2.9 um, ohms plus or minus 0.2 ohms. Find out what the least resistance is and what the greatest resistance is. Teacher, pause the video, have the students work the problem, compare with their partners, and call on non-volunteers. And I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's go to our slates. So we have 2.9 ohms plus or minus, and let me get that plus or minus. I thought it was 0.2 ohms, but let me just double check. It was 0.2 ohms. All right, so we'll do 2.9 plus 0.2. We'll do 2.9, 2.9, get that, minus 0.2. So I get 3.1, that's the greatest. And 2.9 minus 0.2 is 2.7 ohms. And that's the least. And those answers the two questions. So pause the video, students need to, and I'll meet you back here in a minute. Welcome back. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. And, and we checked the answers. So now here's your closure. Teacher, give the students one minute to write down the key points of today's lesson. Teacher, have them share with their partner and then call on non-volunteers. And I'll meet you back here again for another construction math lesson.